So my name is Clint, and I'm going to talk about my unusual path to get into WordPress as a career. Um, thank you very much for letting me speak. It's really a pleasure to be here today. I um, love sharing what I've learned and just trying to help people who are looking at this as an opportunity because it's certainly, certainly been an amazing one for myself. Can anyone not hear me? You can't hear me? All right, cool. It's always helpful. I'll speak up. So and I'll let these guys get in here. So I am... Um, to say that WordPress is the, uh, the center of my life would kind of be an understatement. I, um, I'm the founder of Stacked Agency. We're a full-service online marketing agency in Norwalk, Connecticut. We build all of our sites on WordPress. We're working with WordPress is sort of a prerequisite to work with us. I'm the founder of Illuminate WP. That's my WordPress educational business. We do workshops teaching people how to build basic WordPress sites. I run five different meetup groups, two of which are focused entirely around WordPress, and I was the lead organizer of WordCamp Connecticut. So I do a lot of WordPress stuff. I love WordPress. It's been very good to me. But to get from where I was to where I am now was a pretty long, uh, difficult journey. Um, I'll turn back my story a bit to one of a big pivotal event in my life, which was in 2004. I was uh, 20 years old, and I was at this house party, and a guy pulled out a gun and announced a robbery. And he trapped 13 of my closest friends in a room. I managed to get out of the house, sneak around, um, and made a decision to go back inside and tackle him. And while I tackled him, he shot me twice. Um, I got hit at point-blank range, and I remember at 20 years old, laying on the ground, bleeding out, looking up at the sky, realizing I'm toast. You know, no one's going to remember my name. I'm not leaving anything behind. You know, this is sort of how my story ends. And I remember really sort of begging whatever forces were out there for just one more chance. And I got that chance, and I would love to tell you that I grabbed life by the balls and made the most of every opportunity. Uh, but the reality was that I struggled pretty much my whole adult life with a crippling uh, drug and alcohol problem. That's me six, up to six years ago. Um, led me to some of the darkest places imaginable. I was definitely not someone that anyone in here would want to associate with. Um, really, most of my 20s were spent being arrested, embarrassed, and resuscitated. And um, at times, you know, I definitely wished I had the courage to end my life. But again, something kept my heart beating when it probably should have stopped. Um, and I somehow kept moving forward. My world imploded in 2011 when I was arrested for trafficking marijuana. And I would really like to think of the event as being rescued. Uh, because at a very critical juncture in my life, sitting in a jail cell, um, something deep within me switched on. And I sort of said to myself, you know, you can go two different directions for the rest of your life. You know, you can continue going down the path you're headed, and you know how it ends, because you've been there before. You know how it feels to have to constantly apologize to people, to let people down, to be a loser. Or you could somehow dig down deep and just start to cr climb your way out. And I made a commitment right there that I was never going to let anyone down again. I was never going to put myself in a situation ever again where I had to apologize to anyone because I had screwed up or go to bed ever again knowing that I could live up to more of my potential. Um, so I went to, I bailed out. Um, I went to rehab and got sober and thankfully, you know, have stayed sober and removed one of the, the biggest limiting factors in my life up till that point. But with a pending prison sentence, my job opportunities um, were pretty limited. So I taught myself web design. I knew a little bit about HTML and CSS. And I started asking around people who needed help with their websites. And one person asked me uh, to build a blog for them. And I did some research, and I stumbled onto this platform called WordPress. And I said, this is it. This is my ticket out of here. Um, this is, represents something that I'm good at. I'm going to get paid to do it, and it's something I love to do. And if you find something like that in your life, that is the ticket. Um, and it represented to me a platform that was going to change everything. How every website was built, maintained, and operated. It represented something that I could use to give my clients that gave them a voice, a platform to express themselves, and something that I just felt very passionate about. So there's not a day that goes by that I do not thank my lucky stars that the time that I decided that this was my ticket out of here, the demand for what I was studying exploded. 
and what I knew I had to learn that was my ticket out of the life that I wanted desperately to leave behind, um, I knew if I stuck with it, this was really going to be a huge, um, highly in-demand thing. And as I started building some of these sites and helping people for the first time in my life, I felt like a person of value. I felt like someone that was actually delivering something that was helpful to people. You know, I was doing something good. I was doing something legal. But you know, first I really had to learn it. I had to master it. And I got a lot of people ask me, you know, what classes do I take? This or that? Do you go to college for it? No, you know, I didn't. Um, the first thing I did is I joined a lot of meetup groups. Um, I run a lot of meetup groups now, but at first I just searched around. And WordPress, you know, it, it's a truly amazing the community of people behind it because I was able to join these groups and suddenly be accepted by these positive, uh, supportive people. And keep in mind that for most of my life, I didn't have that. I didn't have positive, supportive, um, inspiring people around me to help me grow and learn. So I joined these groups and I approached mentors. I saw in the group some people that really stood out that I knew were really rocking it, and I begged them. I said, please, I'm a young, hungry guy. I'm trying to build my business faster than anyone you've ever met, and I would do anything to take you out for lunch or coffee. Now, for some of these people, because I needed to first identify what I need to know. We all know there's five million and one different resources out there and five million and one things that people tell you you need to know. But I knew that wasn't true. I, I had to sit with these people because I wanted to play at their level one day and say, what do you use on a day-to-day -day basis? That's the stuff I'm going to study first. And what resources do you use to get there? Now, for some of these people, sitting with me and having coffee for 45 minutes is costing them $5,000, that they're not doing work and producing massive projects. So, what I always tell people is the best way to show appreciation for a mentor is to do exactly what they say to do, read the resources that they tell you to do, apply that stuff, and then report back. So that's what I did over and over and over. If Julio, my buddy Julio, told me that the blueprint by Brennan Dunn was a great resource, I immediately left that coffee, bought that book, applied everything in that book, and then two months later said, here's exactly what I did, here's how it impacted my business, I'm ready for your next lesson. I never wanted these people to feel like they were wasting their time or energy telling me something and you know I wasn't going to apply it. I installed and hacked apart a lot of themes. A lot of times I have developers come to me now and they're like, I want to get into WordPress, I want to make money. I say, if you don't have just the insatiable curiosity to, in curiosity to begin with, you're probably not cut out to be a developer. Um, I was just fascinated by trying to tear things apart remove certain pieces and see what happened when I put it back together. So I would create fictitious websites. You know, I didn't really have a book of business, but I would pretend that I was a record store and my own client and try to understand what a record store might want on their website. And I would just use my time and skills to build up these websites. I would go door to door to businesses, sometimes work for free, and just say, hey, I'll rebuild your website on WordPress. Um, I really saw this as an opportunity to pick up as much work as I could, and just really hustle. Um, I, you know, my, a lot, some mentors recommended some online tutorials, so I asked them what are the best sites, what are the best tutorials, Pippin's plugins is great, WP Tuts Plus, but what I always tell people is be very tactical about it. You know, I sat, I, you know, I come from a training, uh, personal training background as well. I sit down every Sunday night, and now I do this with more business development stuff, but I'd say, all right, Monday from 10 to 11, I'm doing this tutorial. I'm not just going to do it. I'm going to type it out and then apply what I learned. You can, do, you can read through these to your blue in the face, but one hour of coding is equivalent to 50 hours of reading through this stuff. There's no substitute for that. And that's always what I tell people who are trying to get into development. Just start coding. But these tutorials were very helpful. I bought books. And again, same tactical methods. Every Sunday, I would sit down and say, OK, Tuesday from 4 to 5, I'm going to read through this chapter, and I'm going to create some sort of test project to apply that stuff. And I would start to get a feel for, OK, there's certain things that I know, and there's other stuff that I can sort of keep on file as a reference. I don't need to know everything. I don't need to now understand object-oriented plugin development, but I know the references and resources when I do need to pick that up. I watch stuff on WordPress.tv. Um, read some WordPress blogs, again, pretty tactically as well. I'm a very sort of systematized guy, um, so I, would, I, I don't read blogs anymore, but like for 10 minutes a week, I'll bookmark certain blogs um, or articles and then refer back to them in a small chunk of time later in the week. 
I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't spend time every day just like going through and, and seeing what's out there. It's not, it hasn't been effective for me. Um, but I got to a point where it was like, okay, I have a couple clients. I've asked around, friends, family, it taps out pretty quickly. Technical skills only get you so far. You know, you get to a point where it's like you know enough. You're going to figure it out. Um, what really separates, I feel, the, the guys that I sat down and had coffee with from the guys who I know are where they were three years ago is knowing how to sell. And people get very sort of like squirmy, like, oh, you know, well, I'm, I'm a developer. I don't need how to sell. That's bullshit. Sales is life. Sales is the power of influence. It is hands down the most important skill you can have in anything that you do. You are not going to meet a single person. I always challenge people to show me one wildly successful salesman who's not wildly successful at most everything he does, right? It's the power of influence and helping people make decisions. If someone can afford your product and it will benefit them, there is nothing wrong with being pushy about it. My favorite quote from Ramit Sethi, he says, if you don't have a product worth selling aggressively, you don't have a product worth selling. But the first sale that I had to make was had to sell myself. And I don't mean like putting myself in front of someone and presenting myself well. I mean internally, selling myself in that I was the best option that anyone could possibly do business with. Because I knew that I was going to work harder than anyone they had ever met. Because for me, every potential client was a way to build trust and build a reputation that I never had. You know, so people were like, wow, I've never seen someone work so hard. And I was like, dude, you have no idea. This is it for me. I don't have an, every, every transaction I'm doing is sort of make or break, and it's my chance to take my reputation to the next level. And it still blows my mind when some people take that for granted, where I've worked with contractors who show up to a meeting late for the first time. I say, dude, <laughs> like, that's just not how to roll. I always, I, I guess I kind of date myself, even at 30 years old, of referencing Pulp Fiction, but there's a character in there called The Wolf. And I very much said, I want my name and my reputation to precede me. When my name is attached to a project, nobody has to check my work. They know exactly when it's going to be done because that's when I told them it will be done. And they know exactly what will be done because that's exactly what I said will be done. Always. Never deviated from that. If I had told a client, I'm, I'll call you at 9 a.m., I've dialed the first nine digits at 8.59.59 and hit the 10th at 9 a.m. And it was just those little elements of professionalism that I realized pretty quickly in the development world, it's like the, among the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Showing up on time, wearing a suit, <laughs> like I guess those things were unheard of and people were shocked. They're like, wow, you showed up on time and called me when you said and did what you said you were going to do. So um, that was helpful. and That's something I always emphasize. Just you know, be professional. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It's like you... Have that commitment to leadership in any position, whether it's a designer, developer, project manager, whatever. What I also realized, too, is that as I started um, moving beyond just building basic sites, is that people weren't necessarily just buying a product. They're not just buying a website. I was selling them a vision, right? I was selling them the future of their company online. And once I started to move into that, I was starting to tie that emotional attachment. And that's when a lot more deals started coming through because I had to make a logical case for them and the emotional case. And when I was in front of someone and I knew working with me was a good decision for their business, I'm not leaving that room until I have a deposit or a signature. And I don't feel any qualms about that. It's, you know, it's, I'm not getting paid. I'm not going to eat until I sell. So. The th big turning point for me came in 2012 um, when I presented, I volunteered to present at the WordPress Stanford meetup group on custom post types, which I knew nothing about. And I stood in my kitchen and rehearsed for months because I just was like, this is my opportunity. Um, I was terrified and I got up there and spoke. And this woman, Jennifer Carello, came up to me afterwards and said, I need a developer on site one day a week. Would you work with me? I said, yes. However, I may or may not be going to prison uh, in the next six months for an <laughs> undetermined amount of time. So that's the deal. And she just appreciated my honesty. And it was sort of a, you know, a theme that I have to continue, you know, if it's coming clean about my past. Um, but it was all good. And we started working again. I got invited to do that same talk then in New York. And before I knew it, I was speaking a lot. I, I found, I always encourage people, try a bunch of things and see what you love. I never would have known that I, I really enjoyed speaking if, unless I had tried it, and I was terrified. But I, the next thing that happened was I invited Alex Miranda, who I met at the Hudson Valley group, to come down and present at my meetup group. And he spoke about search engine optimization. 
And I have another picture of me at this meetup, just like you can see the gears turning in my head, because I learned more about search engine optimization in one hour than I had in my entire life at multi-day, $1,000 conferences. And I also realized how much I enjoyed getting people together and like doing stuff like this and like, you know, organizing events and just the energy that comes from a lot of people with a shared interest. So I, like a good mentee, I took what he said in this SEO conference or talk and I applied everything. I hold up for months. I rebuilt my website and I optimized my website. And if you search for Connecticut WordPress right now, you'll, you'll see me staring back at you. Freelance WordPress developer, all that. And I remember the day the phone rang and I was like, hello? And the guy's like, yeah, I'm looking for a WordPress developer. I'm like, where'd you find me? He's like, I found you online. <laughs> Word? <laughs> awesome. So now I was having this stream of clients um, contacting me online. I started blogging a lot too. I found that I enjoyed you know, researching and then sharing what I've learned, whether it's through speaking or writing online. So I started to get a lot of people finding my blog posts and things like that, and that was very critical too. So I encourage people who want to get out there, you know, put your content out there, give away a lot, um, share it with others. I became, you know, the, the meetup guy, as people called him. They're like, dude, you're, you're everywhere all the time. I was at meetup groups every night. I still am. Um, I started taking over other meetup groups, organizing my own, um, going to every meetup group I could find, just because I really enjoyed meeting other people, um, sharing what I've learned with them. And for something about the WordPress community that I've found like no other, people are very willing to share what they've learned. They're not like cagey about their stuff like I've seen in some marketing communities. Like I could bring out my laptop and anyone, you know, walk through a problem and they'll say, this is exactly how I would solve it. Um, I also, you know, you give me a small corner of space and a laptop and a crowd of one or more and I would talk to you about WordPress for hours at a time. Um, I started speaking at local universities, local libraries, Kiwanis clubs, Rotary clubs, any place, you name it. Um, I was presenting about WordPress because I really love the platform. I love sharing it with people. But what I wasn't telling people as my business grew very quickly is I still have this tiny little legal issue to resolve. Um, I'm flying back and forth to court in both Colorado and then in Connecticut um, to get a disposition in, in my pending cases. Um, I was looking at seven years at one point. Initially, that was what my lawyer told me to expect. And it, it's very tough. You sort of have to mentally prepare yourself. You know, my days are numbered. Um, and I just have to accept that and put yourself in a mindset of, I'm going to do time. It's, you know, what can you do? You just sort of surrender to that. So I... Um, the one thing that saved me was a stack of letters um, and a very impassioned plea to the judge. And I knew that my actions would speak louder than my words. And I had a stack of letters from people I'd helped in the recovery communities. But I took a deal for 10 months to serve, uh, five years suspended, five years probation. I took that deal on November 12th. They allowed me to set my date for entry to January 23rd. So I had three months to wrap up all my client work, pull in a couple trusted colleagues who I hadn't told till this point said, guys, and true to the WordPress community, I told them the deal and they just said, how can we help? You know, how can we help you uh, maintain your business um, and do what you need to do to put this behind you? And they stepped in and I was, continued to sort of manage my business. But um, I made sure to squeeze in two nights before going into prison, one more meetup group because I was more focused on mastering responsive design and, uh, and SaaS programming. Um, so right before I went in, I did a meetup group two nights before, and everyone's like, when's the next meetup? I was like, I'm going out of town for a little bit. I've limited access to phone or email. <laughs> so maybe sometime towards the summer or, you know, six, seven years from now, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but I went into prison, and, uh, you know, it was a huge sense of relief um, because I went in, I knew I was going to do 10 months. I was probably going to get out in less. And I told myself, you're going to go in there, and you're going to go in stronger than you've ever been mentally, physically, and spiritually. And not only that, you're going to come out even stronger. And I wasn't just going to sit on my thumbs the whole time. I was going to continue to grow and build myself. So when I got in there, I did yoga. I would meditate. Um, I would just reflect on what do I want to accomplish with the rest of my life now that I know what I'm capable of if I stay sober and stay on the right track. So this is actually a scan from my journal. And I've whited out some stuff, but some of the goals went out. WordPress seminar, create small business package. That later turned into my agency and WordCamp Hartford. So I sat there every day and I'd say, "This, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? You can do anything and you know you're capable of it. You set your mind to it. 
So I'd always ask myself, and I still do, what can I do right now to move this goal forward? I'll give you a clue. There's not a hell of a lot you can do in prison. Um, you can just sort of read books and, and reflect. There's no computers. There's no internet. There's 15-minute collect phone calls. But I, would, I started writing out all the course material for my WordPress workshop. And I'd sit there every day. This is scan from the journal, module two, overview of dashboard settings and all that. And I would just start to imagine it. And I wrote out these very elaborate visualizations. You can see in the back, but I stand before the attentive crowd at the Stanford Innovation Center, down to the clothes that I'm wearing and the feeling I had and the confidence and all of that. And I sat and every single day, I would imagine this moment. And I reminded myself every single day from my favorite book, The Greatest Salesman in the World, I will persist until I succeed. I said, I'm not going to let up on this. I, got out of the, I pulled out of the gates that last time. I got an um, early re release program for good behavior and first time offender. And I reminded myself two things. One, do not ever forget how this feels, because you are one mistake away from being back. And two, don't ever look back. And as soon as I got out, I hit the ground running with such a tremendous sense of urgency, like nothing I'd ever experienced before. And I pulled in people, and my dream became their dream. So less than 90 days later, I stood before the crowded classroom. I sold 26 tickets to the first WordPress workshop. I had the custom-fitted blue shirt that I had made from a tailor in Fairfield that was in my visualization and everything. And my dream became other people's dream, and since then we've had over 120 students uh, pass through the program. Now, I made a, a very dangerous mistake after that. I didn't have something lined up right after it. So after the workshop was done, you know, I kind of got a little disoriented and aloof. And, um, you know, someone reminded me, they're like, dude, you've been working focused on this so hard for so long. What's next? And I didn't have an answer. And I realized that's why I'm sort of in a funk right now. I remembered what that was and what that vision was when I went to WordCamp in Boston later that fall. That's me with Sandra Christie. And I remembered, oh, yeah, that goal. WordCamp in Connecticut, WordCamp Hartford. And later that week, I invited Boone Gorge, who's the lead developer of BuddyPress, down to speak at WordPress Stanford. And I, t I said, Boone, let's have dinner beforehand. We have to have dinner. Because um, I knew it was going to be such a valuable time with him. I said, Boone, I want to take my career in WordPress to the next level and give back to the community. What can I do? And he said, well, it seems like you're doing a lot already. You know, what do you want to do? What are you good at? And I remember that feeling that I loved of bringing people together and doing events like this. And it got the gears turning. And sure enough, as fate would have it, a couple days later, I get an email from a guy who had moved to New Haven from India who had organized WordCamp in India. And he asked, WordCamp? Question mark. He wanted to know if anyone had been um, organizing WordCamp in Connecticut. So I said, call me. You know, I'm not a big email person. I use social media. I just say, let's hop on the phone and let's talk about this. And I gave him my word. I said, I'm going to make this happen. Um, whether you're, because he was unsure about his visa and how long he'd be around, I said, you know what? You have, you, you reminded me of what I want to do, and I'm going to make this happen. I give you my word. Um, so from that point, true to the WordPress community, uh, I put out a couple calls, and within, I don't know, a week or two, I had 40 volunteers, five core organizers, and had locked down a venue that was donated to us. So we met every uh, week on Sunday evening on a Google Plus Hangout, worked through a massive base camp project, and just kept pushing it forward. And the, the dream and the vision that I had you know, became these people's dream as well. And that was a really magical experience. Because on May 10th, we sold 200 tickets. We had people come in from all over the country and descend upon the Stanford Innovation Center. And it was just the most uh, magical experience. And it was the first time that I shared you know, very publicly my story. It's like, you guys are here because I thought of this in prison. <laughs> but um, it, was, it was really an amazing event. Um, it just reminded me how much I love being involved in this community. And when I tell people, you know, WordPress in many ways um, saved my life. You know, it gave me something to be passionate about, something that I believed in. It gave me my clients a voice. And it really introduced me to so many amazing people that I love and care about and have, that have supported me and been such a positive influence in my life. And you know, this all sort of ties back to the, the first thing I shared in the sense now that I live you know, every day and really try to give my absolute best effort, do as much as I can for everyone else. So that at the end of the day, you know, if I am ever in a situation where 
you know, I feel like my time is running out, you know, I don't want to have to ask for one more chance again because really I feel like now I've made the most of the one that I had. And I thank you guys for letting me share and just share this as honestly and candidly as possible. And um, much appreciated. Thanks.